Good afternoon, folks. This morning's top science article is a big confirmation, the fourth one this year already, that solar energy changes the weather. We have seen several papers in just the last couple months on solar storm impact to atmospheric electricity and how it's not about irradiance, but the particle forcing of the solar wind and magnetic disruption, electric particles, magnetic storms, changes in the atmospheric electromagnetic state. It's pretty rudimentary. And while this isn't hard to comprehend, for some reason it is still not included in weather models and climate models, despite the widespread acknowledgement of the forcing potential. They like to pretend it doesn't exist. This is of course getting even more amplified now that Earth's magnetic field is weakening in the ongoing pole shift, letting more of that solar energy in. So now, let's rewatch and compile in our brains two key videos from last month as a reminder of why it's critically important to understand that the sun impacts atmospheric electricity. Good afternoon, folks. Today we're going to expand on this morning's top story. The climate zealots do not realize what they've done. And it's only a matter of time before this information is widely understood. So here's a detailed preview. This morning we shared Brian's tweet, and by the way, he is one of the great people to follow on Twitter. The video he shared was of a new kind of weather modification, not chemtrails or cloud seeding, direct electrification of the atmosphere. They literally discharge electrical energy out into the clouds, which causes enhanced rainfall even better than cloud seeding. Might as well fly up there and dump buckets of water. As I mentioned this morning and have many times before, I hate weather modification. It's not smart to try to play God in the sky. But at least this one doesn't dump poisonous chemicals into the air, and more importantly, it is the undoing of the climate narrative. They truly don't realize what they've done here. You see, the studies have already been done. They are just being ignored and swept under the rug by the mainstream. There are literally hundreds of statistical correlations and mechanistic forcing proofs of how the sun and cosmic rays impact precipitation and much more. They impact the air electrically in the same way as that weather modification by charged particle introduction, coupling with the solar wind, penetrating electric fields, forcing Van Allen electrons down into the atmosphere, protons directly intruding through the polar cusp and into the atmosphere, geomagnetically induced electric currents from solar storms, and equatorward traveling energy waves from the auroral excitement. Then, of course, the cosmic ray cascades, breaking out into millions of electric particles with the cosmic rays hitting every inch of the upper atmosphere every second. To recap that in list form, all these things introduce electricity to the atmosphere, just like the weather modification process we shared at the start of the video. Solar wind coupling, proton flux into the cusp, penetrating electric fields, geomagnetic induction of electric currents, and cosmic ray electric particle cascades. All of these simultaneously excite the global electric circuit vertical currents in the atmosphere. In fact, every space weather interaction with Earth impacts the electrical state of the atmosphere. This impacts rainfall in two ways. It amplifies the ambient electric state of the atmosphere, which is what that weather modification process does, but it also causes water vapor and dust to clump together and fall as rain while also creating electrified cloud condensation nuclei, which helps stick to the water vapor even more. This is why space weather impacts not only precipitation, but cloud cover, and therefore temperatures. It affects the pressure cells through that global electric circuit impact. The electrification impacts storms and lightning, and the electrical effect on water vapor and oxygen affects the winds and jet streams, all levels of the atmosphere. In case you haven't put this together yet, by recognizing that their electric jolt weather modification works, they have admitted that solar activity, the one they try to tell us isn't relevant to the weather, is absolutely relevant. They have admitted that their entire story of climate is premised on excluding key data, cherry picking to fit a political narrative. And with that out of the picture in the math and the models, they get to blame every ounce of space weather forcing on human pollution. It's not that pollution is good, it's just that poisoning our environment is a different story than atmospheric dynamic behavioral impact. Folks, it's still early for this science, and most have not put these pieces together. Those who have are mostly firmly bought into and committed to the narrative, and they're not talking. But now you know, and if you have understood this video and that they have admitted it, 
you can communicate it clearly to anyone. Good afternoon, folks. This is part two of the examination we began yesterday afternoon, the electric weather tidbit that they should have never let out of the bag, at least not if they plan to keep their climate narrative going. Hopefully you caught the first video, and yes, they really messed up. Not only is it a mistake to perform weather modification, but this version of it blows gaping holes in their narrative and reveals the truth about what impacts the atmosphere and where our future is heading. To quickly review, they are moving towards electric shock therapy for clouds. Funny thing to say, but it's true. They figured out that amplifying the electrical state of water vapor in the atmosphere is more likely to make it rain. The problem for them is that this is the electrical state most impacted by the sun and cosmic rays, and they keep wanting you to believe that those things have no impact on weather and climate. Oops. Turns out those hundreds of studies on solar forcing of precipitation and other weather conditions, which they keep sweeping under the rug, are actually true. Heck, we just learned about an unexpectedly strong impact of a solar storm that propagated downward into the lower atmosphere through the global electric circuit and electrodynamic coupling. What did that do to the weather? This not only stamps the point we made in part one, but it helps take it further, because like so many of these unexpected solar storms recently, they are caused by Earth's weakening magnetic field, tied to the magnetic pole shift, letting in more of that solar energy. That means that this paradigm of truth in solar forcing is also becoming more and more extreme and profound by the day as the magnetic pole shift. Let's remember that space energy introduced to Earth has a 2 to 5x amplification effect on atmospheric parameters, so the 60 to 200% increase in that space energy expected during this magnetic pole shift will cause a 120 to 1000% increase in the atmospheric effects from it. Now translate that to more heat, more cold, more floods, more storm energy, and more droughts. This is bigger than most of you realize, not just for the reality of solar forcing of the atmosphere and the failure of the mainstream narrative of global temperatures, but for what's happening to our planet's magnetic shield against that energy from space. There is no tax that can get us out of this one. No amount of clever wordplay to undo what those weather modifiers have now proven to be true. There is only continued fibbing from powerful players and the rubes who believe it, versus those with the eyes to see. Do you see? I'll see you in the morning for the Daily Show. Be sure to subscribe and be safe, everyone.